any business projections are only estimates as nobody knows the future. So after arriving at these estimates, perhaps it's advised to look at a few scenarios. So in this video, we're going to talk about scenario and sensitivity analysis. When evaluating business project, business investments, you perhaps might want to have a look at NPV or maybe an IRR of the given project. But the cash flows that we plug into the formulas for NPV and IRR come from the performer financial statements. In other words, financial statements of a future potential performance of this new project. But as I often like to say in my videos, nobody knows the future. So all of these uh, very fancy NPV and internal rate of return calculations are um, only estimates. So due to this uncertainty, perhaps uh, a bit of a deeper look at these estimates is required. So what can we do about that uncertainty? First of all, besides uh, using some fancy mathematics in calculating NPV and IRR, intuitively you want to have a clear idea of why this project can create value to your business and on top of that a bonus would be an ability to explain your understanding of this value clearly if you can communicate your understanding clearly it only adds to the weight of your thoughts besides that there are a couple of other things you might do with these estimates of npv and irr one of them is the scenario analysis where you basically consider a few other possibilities, a few other situations, such as, for example, the worst case scenario, where you try to figure out what happens to the value of the project if things don't really work out, if a lot of things do break down. And uh, if you truthfully arrive to a positive NPV and a relatively attractive internal rate of return, even in the worst case scenario, that significantly adds to the attractiveness of this investment project. As in that case, it would seem that the investment project is uh, still beneficial, even if a lot of the things you expect to work out actually don't. You might also have a look at your base case. And while looking at the scenario analysis, you might also want to have a look at your best case. If uh, beyond expectations, things actually work out unusually well, you might see what that makes to your NPV and IRR calculations. In addition to the scenario analysis, you might have a look at sensitivity analysis, which is a bit of an what if question. What if one particular thing, uh, one of the inputs for your business project is altered? Perhaps some of the costs are changed. What does that make to NPV? How sensitive is NPV to the changes in a given variable? For example, if you can find all of the materials at expected costs, what if the fixed cost of renting that workshop is not as expected? And how sensitive is your NPV to the changes in this fixed cost? Sensitivity analysis can help you answer these what-if questions. Next, let's uh, throw in some numbers, calculate NPV and IRR, and try out our scenario and sensitivity analysis. So let's have a look at this project lasting for, let's say, seven years. The sales quantity changes from year to year. At the beginning, it ramps up from a low 3,000 all the way gradually up to 7,000. And after five years, as, um, say, competition catches up, your sales drop down to 5,000. Unit price also ramps up gradually from 110 up to 120 and again after five years as competition catches up your price has to drop down to 110 and even lower to 100 by year seven after which the project is completed cost of goods sold are 60 dollars per unit let's say throughout all of the seven years so we have the 60s here same fixed cost 24,000 through all of the years there it is Depreciation, uh, let's use a straight line depreciation for the equipment uh, that is supposed to last for eight years, although our project is only going to last for seven years. So with the equipment cost of 800,000, straight line depreciation per year based on eight years is going to be equal one eighth of the equipment cost. 800,000 divided by eight gives us 100,000 depreciation every year. There it is. Interest expense is a fixed uh, $2,200. There it is. Our tax rate is going to be 
initial equipment cost is 800,000 and by the end of the project at the end of seven years we're going to sell this equipment for 180,000. Networking capital at the beginning of the project at time zero when we start the project we have to invest 18,000 into short-term capital networking capital and as the project continues to run we will need to maintain 15 percent of sales revenue in the form of networking capital so that means the actual value of networking capital is going to change from year to year and we're going to look at the changes in networking capital when calculating the cash flows so let's have a look at those cash flows as you remember the cash flows that go into the calculation of npv and irr consist of three parts the operating cash flow, the cash flow related to longer term assets, let's call them net capital spending, and the cash flows associated with shorter term assets, let's call them changes in networking capital. Let's start with calculating operating cash flow, which is, of course, earnings before interest and tax, plus depreciation. We cancel out depreciation, which is already included in the EBIT with a negative sign add depreciation to cancel it out as it's not a real out-of-pocket cost minus taxes that gives us operating cash flow so using this formula this is the cash flow we're going to start from so let me make some space here let's add sales revenue which is of course a unit sales multiplied by unit price copy that for the lifetime of the project let's add cost of goods sold in total rather than per unit which is the per unit costs multiplied by quantities of units. Copy that for the lifetime of the project. And we can add earnings before interest and tax, which is the sales revenue minus all the costs. And again, we copy that for the lifetime of the project. Now we can add earnings before tax, which is the EBIT minus the interest expense. And we apply the tax rate of 28% to the EBT, earnings before tax copy that as well and we can arrive at net income which is EBT minus the tax payment finally our first cash flow the operating cash flow according to these formulas is EBIT plus depreciation minus the tax payment we have that through years of one to seven next looking at net capital spending at the beginning at time zero we'll have to buy that equipment for eight hundred thousand and the only other thing we do with the long-term assets is we sell them for 180,000 at the end of the project's life. That's a negative net capital spending because selling the equipment is opposite to actually spending the money on it. But before we know how much we get from selling that equipment, we need to compare the market price with the book value to find out how much is the after-tax salvage value of that used equipment. Remember from a recent video that uh, after-tax salvage value is equal to the difference between the sales price and the tax rate multiplied by the difference again between the sales price and the book value. Our book value of the equipment by the end of year 7 is going to be the original price of the equipment minus 7 multiplied by depreciation per year as the straight line fixed depreciation of 100,000. That gives us a book value of 100,000 at the end of seven years. So as the market price of 180,000 is greater than the book value of 100,000, we'll have to pay tax on the difference of 80,000. And the amount of salvage value after tax is going to be that 180,000 minus the tax rate multiplied by the difference. And again, as it's a sale of the equipment, which is opposite to net capital spending, we'll put a negative sign here giving us negative 157,600 in net capital spending at the end of the project's life. Next, according to this formula, before looking at uh, changes in networking capital, it's easier to look at networking capital amounts first in each year. We start with 18,000, and after that, networking capital is equal to 15% of sales revenue. So networking capital grows up to year five and declines after that down to 75,000 by the end of the project. And after that, the change in networking capital is only the difference between the new value and the old value. Copy that and of course, near the end of the project's life, as sales revenue decreases, networking capital decreases as well, showing us negative changes. 
And there is one more thing we need to do for the end of the project, which is easy to forget and uh, get incorrect on the exams. At the end of the project's life, we withdraw all of the networking capital out of the project and into our pocket because short-term assets are not subject to depreciation. So we just need to remember to withdraw all of the remaining networking capital by the end of the project's life. That's going to be our change in networking capital at the termination of the project. Now we are finally ready to calculate our cash flow from assets, which is operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus changes in networking capital. At the beginning, we need to invest 818,000 into the projects. That's a negative cash flow. We just copy the formula for positive cash flows through years one to seven. With a given required rate of return, let's say 16%, we can now calculate NPV and internal rate of return. Equals NPV rate and the values of cash flow from assets starting from year one. As you see, the hints here show value one, not value zero. The tricky part here is we need to remember to add the initial costs by hand manually. The computer thinks that uh, this is in percentages. Let me change that to dollar values, giving us over 100,000 in positive NPV. We can also calculate the internal rate of return. Just drop in all of the cash flows into the formula. Use this button at the top for more details, 19.4%, which is greater than the required rate of return, making this project acceptable. These are again NPV and internal rate of return. Next, looking at the scenario analysis, let me call this scenario that we've calculated so far our base case. For the worst case scenario, let's decrease the quantity of units sold down by 11%. Let's decrease the price by 5% in each of the years and increase the cost of goods sold by 15%. These are just examples that we might come up with while brainstorming what uh, could happen in uh, the worst case scenario for our project. And for the best case scenario, perhaps we're going to come up with the possibility that the quantity sold will actually be 10% higher than expected, the price will be 5% higher, and the cost of goods sold, the cost of materials, will perhaps be 10% below expectation. Let me just copy these sheets and rename them as the worst and best case scenarios. Now going down to the worst case scenario, let's just decrease the quantity by 11%. I'm just going to go to sales revenue and multiply the sales revenue by 0.89, which is equivalent to decreasing the quantity by 11%. I'll copy this formula and move on to the price, decreasing it by a further 5%. That's again equivalent to multiplying the resulting sales revenue by another 0.95 and copy that for the rest of the years. Now coming back to the cost of goods sold, let's increase that by 15% for our worst case scenario. That's equivalent to multiplying by 1.15 and I'm going to copy that again. With the same required rate of return, we see that NPV comes down to a negative 300,000, which is a big difference from the base case scenario of positive 100,000 in NPV. And the internal rate of return drops down to 4.7% which is below our minimum required rate of return for this project. Moving on to the best case scenario, I'll just apply these changes to the quantity price and cost of goods sold. Quantity is up 10%, that's equivalent to multiplying by 1.1. Price is up by 5%, that's equivalent to multiplying by 1.05. Copy the larger sales revenue to the rest of the years. And for the best case scenario, we decrease the cost of goods sold by 10%. That's equivalent to multiplying by 0.9. And again, copy that, giving us a much larger net present value for the best case scenario of over 460,000, up from 101,000 in the base case. Internal rate of return increases to 30.3% versus 19.4% in the base case scenario. Next, for the sensitivity analysis, I want to pick a variable and see how sensitive is NPV and IRR to the changes in that variable. Let's um, have a look at fixed costs, for example. I want to pick um, three to five different levels of these fixed costs with our base case in the middle. 
So let me look at 5,000 above and below the base case fixed costs, giving us a range from 19,000 to 24,000 and to 29,000. Next to that, I want to have a look at the values of NPV and IRR. With a base case of 24,000 in fixed cost, our NPV is over 101,000 and IRR is nearly 19.4%. We can show that in percentages and move on to 19,000 as fixed costs. I'll just change that to 19,000 and copy this value, giving me a larger net present value and larger IRR. Next, moving on to 29,000 in fixed costs. Copy that and copy the new values for NPV and IRR. Next, I want to look at the graph at the chart of how sensitive are the NPV and IRR to the changes in fixed costs. Let's insert them as a line. I want to click on this red line. I don't see any variations there because the NPV values are too large. Let's place IRR on a separate vertical axis. Here it is on the right hand side. And on the horizontal axis, I want to have the fixed costs. Right click, select data, and we enter these values. There it is. We see that as fixed cost increases, both NPV and IRR decline, so it's a downward slope chart. If instead you have revenue here on the horizontal axis, or perhaps sales price of the equipment after the project is terminated, you will see an upward sloped curve, as NPV would improve with greater revenue or with higher salvage value. Finally, we can calculate the sensitivity of changes in NPV to changes in fixed costs. For that, we'll look at a difference between any two NPV values. We can choose any two values as the slope is the same for a straight line and divide that by the corresponding difference between the two fixed cost values. In our case, as fixed costs and NPV move in opposite directions, our answer is going to be negative. Let's round to cents and we get that every dollar change in fixed costs and PV changes by $2.91. There you go, sensitivity and scenario analysis for you. Good luck on your exams.